41 cards in here, but I just, I, I need every card. 40 is optimal. Okay, okay, but, but, but listen, like, I, I need this one for that matchup, and I can't cut this one, because, because what if this happens? You have to play 40. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, but, but, but listen, okay, okay, okay. I know, I know 40 is more consistent, but, but, no, no, but, 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 but no, no, but. Hey guys, Yishan here. Um, I wanted to thank all of you guys recently for the the amount of crazy amount of subscribers I got from my Grand Maji Dick profile, which I'll have a, you know a card up there, as well as my math and Yu-Gi-Oh video about hand traps. This is another math and Yu-Gi-Oh video to it as well, but we'll get right into it soon. Um, but I just want to thank you guys. Also, again, these videos are really hard to make, so please consider subscribing. Um, if you enjoy this style of content, it encourages me to make more. Um, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, today's question that we're trying to answer with some math is, is 40 cards optimal? Now, you might be like one of those two guys in the beginning, you know, you believe in 40, or you think, you know, okay, one or two cards, maybe three or four, you know, it's whatever, I, I don't really know what to cut, it's not a big deal, 41's my number, whatever it may be. Okay, so now how are we gonna answer this question? Well, let's let's take a look. Okay, well we need some sort of way to estimate this mathematically, right? We we need some sort of framework to help us answer this question. And so my framework is well, okay, let's let's take a look at things in terms of a, a three of you know a playset in your deck, right? Let's look at how that varies as we add more cards into our deck. You know, as we get less and less likely to open a three of in our five card starting hand. Now, of course, um, you know, the game is more than a starting hand. You know, you don't just want to... Th this sort of calculation that I'm doing is just a framework for trying to understand how adding extra cards into your deck affects your percentages of drawing them. It's not the end-all and be-all. It's important to remember that, right, a game is much more than an opening hand. I just like to use an opening hand because you always get an opening hand in Yu-Gi-Oh! And so that's, you know, that matters a lot more, right? Now, uh, you can see this little thing I've got here. This is a, called the hypergeometric calculator. Whoops, this little thing popped up. But basically, this thing shows you, I have a link in the description on how to use it, but basically, you've got the population size, which is your deck size, the number of successes, in this case, I'm using three, a five card hand, that's the sample size, and the chance of drawing one, and if this stupid thing would go away, but basically, this probability x greater than equal one means that what's the chance I draw one or more of these three cards in my opening hand of five cards, and this is basically 33.8%. Okay, so of course, how to do all these calculations, you can check that out in the description below. I think also Simo has a video on how to use this website in more depth. I'll try to link that if I can as well um, to help you guys you know, do your own calculations, make your own judgments. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at the honest truth here. Okay, so this is the honest truth. One card doesn't make much of a difference, okay? Now, now before you guys get all crazy and start rejoicing and saying, ha, you know, I told you so, I, I knew I was right about that, you know, I, I knew I was right that I could play 41 cards and get away with it. This doesn't mean you should play 41 cards because it doesn't make much of a difference because you shouldn't be playing extra cards for no reason. That just makes your deck less consistent. But, you know, like I'm saying, the truth is, you know, you see people top all the time with 41, 42 deck card decks, and maybe they have good reasons, maybe they don't. Even if they don't, the truth is it doesn't make that much of a difference. You go through a whole tournament, and it might not even make a difference for you. So let's take a look at the numbers. This is the math part of the math in Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Let's take a look. Let's see. Okay, so the difference between, you know, and again, we're assuming... Uh, three ofs in a five card hand with we're changing the deck size because we're trying to figure out you know how deck size affects our percentages okay the difference between 40 and 41 cards in our deck is 33.8 percent chance of seeing our play set versus 33 percent chance you know that's only a 0.8 percent difference by the way and so 0.8 percent to put that in perspective i always like to put it in perspective for you guys because of course it is a difference you know you're gonna be less consistent but how much is the question well, in this case, you know, it's more than every 100 games. Now, you know, at your average regional, you're playing about 25 to 30 games. Okay, at your big regional, YCS, you know, you're playing 25 to 30 games. And so, 
you know, that's not going to make, 41 cars is not going to make much of a difference. Okay, now if we go from 41 to 42, we now have a point, we're adding another 0.7% difference. From 33, we're down to 32.3. Now that combined is about a 1.5% difference. So now we're talking, you know, once every, you know, 60 something games, you know, and it's getting more and more. And if we add a third card, we add another 0.7% difference. We go from 32.3 down to 31.6, and we're adding another 0.7%. Uh, this is a good rule of thumb, by the way, to just go down by 0.7 or 0.6 every two cards. So, you know, okay, 0.7%. Now we're, we're talking like, you know, 2.2% difference, 22 2.3% difference. And now we're starting to see this occur, you know, about more than one every 50 games. And I'm sorry if you can hear that beeping in the background. I, could, I can't turn off this stupid smoke detector. I apologize. Um, I wish I could, but you know, it's, it's, it's low on batteries. I apologize. Okay. Let's get back to the, the point at hand here. It's important to remember, okay, this is just starting hand, of course, but it's also important to remember that this, you know, 2.2% or 0.8% or 0.7%, depending on how you want to look at it, you actually want to amplify this a little bit because this is just the starting hand percentages. So don't look at this 0.8% and be like, oh, you know, I'm only losing 0.8%. Well, no, you know, if you draw five or six cards, you know, or do you draw 10 cards on average, you can almost, not quite double this percentage, but you know, you have to understand that you're, you're losing more than just the percentages that you're seeing here. But the truth is when it comes to just opening up cards, one card doesn't make much of a difference. But again, you shouldn't just play an extra card because it still makes a slight bit difference. It's just not that much. Okay, now that we're gonna have to go to another interesting topic is, well, is Upstart Goblin worth it? You know, okay, 39 cards is a little more consistent than 40. Well, let's take a look. Okay, so we've got 39 versus 40. We've got 34.5 and 33.8%. Okay, this is a 0 0.7, 0 0.8%. Now, you'll, you'll notice that it's like, why is it 0 0.7 the last one was 0 0.8? Well, there's just some rounding differences. Okay, it's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8%. Okay. So, however, you shouldn't forget, though, that Upstart Goblin is not a free card. It costs 1,000 life points. Now, if your deck doesn't care about life points, you know, you think life points matter very little when it comes to winning games, you know, uh, Ren Madre, I think life points do matter, but some decks really, really just don't care about life points, then Upstart Goblin should problem, should be in your deck if you're going to play a 40-card deck. Now, don't forget, though, because, you know, it doesn't work well with Extravagance, because Extravagance and Upstart don't pair well, so it's not, like, completely free. Also, 1,000 life points can matter. Also, I've heard some people say, and I just want to bring this point up, I've heard some people say that, you know, well, okay, I have Upstart Goblin in my deck, but if I don't draw it, I actually save the 1,000 life points. And a lot of people say that as a, as a, you know, as a benefit to, to saying is Upstart Goblin worth it. Well, actually, that's not quite true because if you don't draw the Upstart Goblin, if you also didn't draw the card that you put in your deck, not you, you also save a thousand life points, right? Like if you don't draw the Upstart Goblin, if the Upstart Goblin was a different card, you know, you'd still save the a thousand life points. So Upstart Goblin only matters when you draw. That's that's when the a thousand life points. So we're getting this 0.7% difference. Now, this is important. So I, I think that if you are playing a deck that's not playing Extravagance for some reason, but wants to play draw cards and doesn't really care much about life points, I do think Upstart Goblin is worth it, um, depending, you know. Of course, there's a lot of circumstances, but certainly a card not to forget. Okay, some decks should definitely play 40 cards. In my opinion, or less, 39, I should say, or 39, but you know, some decks, some of these decks play extravagance. So decks like multi, uh, or like Ultra Geist, that basically they, they want to draw a Mellow Seeker or a Multi Faker or a Personal Spoof, and they need Multi Faker to get their engine going, right? Car cards that are relying on a certain card, decks, sorry, decks that are relying on a certain card should only have, should, okay, and, you know, sorry, this is a little more, but should be playing the minimum possible. So they're playing three extravagance. So you probably don't need to play Upstart and Altergeist and Subterra. But like, for example, the Hidden City is so important in the Subterra strategy, in my opinion, that, that playing more than 40 is incorrect. Same with sort of ABC and, you know, these, these decks that are really, really make or break depending on if they draw a key card, really, really, really should be playing 40 because you you're trying to maximize the consistency with these decks. And so, so in my opinion, there's very little, very few reasons I can think of, very few excuses I can think of to play more than 40. So that's something I wanted to put out there. If you're playing a deck like this, and now it's not just these three decks listed here, these are just examples, of course, but if you're playing decks like this, you should play 40. Okay, so 
Now, we have, we have to ask ourselves, well, okay, sometimes it's okay to go over, right? Okay, now, I, I wrote this in caps, and you should definitely have a reason for going over. Like I said, you shouldn't just be playing 41 cards because you feel like it, okay? You need to have a good reason. Now, let's let's take a look at my my images here. Okay, so I like to play a lot of Grand Maju. Gizmek is a mainstay in Grand Maju decks. Gizmek is actually a reason you could play over 40 cards that uh, I'm not saying you should but at least is a, a decent reason and I'm gonna be looking into it if you want to see that Grand Maju deck profile by the way that's gonna be up there thanks for the love on that video it's gonna be linked up here but basically okay here's my point Gizmek banishes the top eight cards of your deck right so you get a finite number of banishes if you add a few more cards to your deck let's say I had two more cards to my deck okay then you know, one in every four games, roughly, because it's two out of eight, I can make an extra Gizmek Banish. Now let's go back a few slides here. Okay, adding two cards to my deck, I lost about 1.5% chance of drawing, you know, certain three of maybe a little more. Let's just say around two, three, four percent, okay? But 25% of the time, if the game goes the distance, meaning I can actually use all of you know, my Gizmic banishes, 25% of the time I get an extra banish. Is that worth it? Maybe, maybe not. You know, this really is, is an interesting question. You have to ask yourself as a Grand Maju player is, what's the perfect amount, you know? Because a lot of times you don't even need an extra Gizmic banish. It doesn't even matter, the truth. So you just win the game before that matters. But sometimes it does matter. But then if you add extra cards, you're lowering consistency. So again, it's a close call, but that's an interesting reason. Another reason I hear a lot, and this is my big four colon three thing, is ratios. Players are always saying I'm trying to, you know, min-max my ratios. I want to draw this this percent of the time. Now, okay, here's my opinion about this. The truth is most players that say that they're trying to, you know, get the ratios correct are just plain bullshitting, to be honest. They're just making stuff up, you know? They're like, okay, th this feels right, this seems right. I, d I don't want to play two of this, I want to play three of this, blah, 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 blah. Ratios are a fine reason to play more than 40, but you should really, really, really do your math, do your homework. Okay, so, last thing. All right, um, this is another reason that, like, I see people say is, oh, well, if I play more, if I play more, um, cards in my deck, I reduce the chance of drawing a brick. Now, again, this is actually an okay reasoning. However, if that's your only reason for playing more cards, you should be wary. Because let's take a look. Uh, I wrote this half a percent thing here. Why did I write this half a percent thing here? Well, if I go from 40 to 41 cards, my chance of drawing the one-off brick in my deck goes down about uh, half a percent, I believe. Um, so... Yeah, I think it goes from 12.5 to about 12%. Uh, and, okay, well, listen. Now, well, okay, you have to go look and, and see the difference. We, we, we lost an 8% though chance of opening our, you know, usually we're playing a 3 of 1 of brick. We, we lost 8% chance. In this case, we're losing, sorry, 0.8% chance and 0.5% chance. Half a percent is 0 0.5, 0 0.8. So we're actually making it less likely to draw our 3 of. Okay, so that kind of, you know, that kind of, it's an okay reason. It's pretty close, point and point 0.5. So if you have, like, bricks in your deck, it's one thing you can look into, um, you know. It, you sh but it shouldn't be your only reason, or if it is your only reason, you really, really, really want to check the math. Okay, you really want to check the math depending on, you know, how many of the power cards you're playing versus how many bricks you're playing. You really want to check the math. Okay. And you also need to check, you know, how important is it to you that you don't open the brick. Because sometimes if you open the brick, you can still play like, like Gamma or something. So that's important. But I just wanted to make this note for you. you you're gaining about half a percent if you add an extra card from 40 to 41 for a chance of one up brick. Okay, last thing I want to point out is, okay, you know, this is sort of something that you guys, if you're, if you're trying to think of how many is optimal in your deck, it's something you need to go on that hypergeometric calculator and calculate for yourself. Right, because there's a lot of different decks, a lot of different ways to do things. In this video, and in most of these math and Yu-Gi-Oh videos, I just want to give you a framework, a baseline for thinking about how to approach this problem. Okay, well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed again, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. I'll do a giveaway of 500, I promise. Whatever you guys want. Well, not whatever, but, you know, within reason, we'll do a giveaway. All right, guys, until next time, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, 
Have a nice day. Have a nice night. Whatever you're doing.